Welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Today's review is the FX Dreamline Laminate. Now this is the 177 version in FAC format. It's the first FAC FX I've tested actually or reviewed in 177 format. So it's been interesting to see the ballistic differences between that and the more common 22s and 25s I've done in the past. If you want to check out some of the tech specs for the rifle, I've put the link to the FX website in the item description. But these are my review thoughts and comments on my use of the rifle and how it might apply to your use in the real world. Overall length is 970mm which is 38.2 inches and overall weight is 2.7 kilograms which is 6.1 pounds. The smooth twist X barrel is 540mm long which is 21.3 inches and it's threaded half inch UNF at the muzzle for a moderator or brake. Length of pull is 358mm which is 14.1 inches. This is a safe dry fire on the trigger, it's a two stage unit, it's adjustable but it was at 408 grams or 14 ounces when it was delivered. It's very crisp and notably smooth. The side lever cocking is also notably smooth and perhaps more so because this isn't one of the bullpup designs so you've got fewer mechanical linkages and connections moving backwards and forwards down the stock. Everything is very much close to the mechanism it's actually operating. The air cylinder is 220cc capacity and it fills to 230 bar, which I found gave me about 50 accurate repeatable shots from the 100 bar regulator pressure. The internal pressure of the AMP regulator is shown on this side manometer here and it's just below 100 bar. Now this rifle was producing 19.2 foot pounds at maximum power. There is a second manometer on the end of the air reservoir which shows you the actual remaining pressure within the bottle itself. And when you do fill this, there is a sliding rotating cap here which exposes where the probe fits in to fill the bottle with. So you just slot the probe in, filter pressure, bleed it off, take it out and then just close that to stop any dust going in. Do be a little bit careful though because this does actually come off quite easily. The three stage adjuster on the left side is knurled and easily gripped. It offers high, medium and low settings. I measured high at 19.2 foot pounds, medium at 14.3 foot pounds and low at 10.3 foot pounds from the 100 bar AMP regulator pressure. This Dreamline laminate is visually very different to the more chassis orientated rifles from FX like the Impact for example or the newer Pantera things like that. This is a little bit more similar to the Crown but I think overall it's a slimmer sort of fit into you. Um, the rifle is totally ambidextrous, you can shoot it right handed or left handed, it's got a Monte Carlo cheek piece which is ambidextrous and the palm swell is ambidextrous too, so it's just as comfortable to shoot left or right handed. Length of pull means it gives you a solid reach into your shoulder and the recoil pad itself is not spongy but it's grippy so it stays in position. The finish on the stock is superb, it's beautifully smooth and well polished. I love the checkering too, it's certainly grippy without being overtly aggressive. The shape is quite slim but you can still clamp it in a tripod if you want to do and you do get a nice hand filling on the forehand with just the fingertips touching the air reservoir there and when it mounts up it mounts up with quite neutral balance maybe just about here so it's just quite pointable. That does of course depend on what size if you add a moderator on the end or not and this just screws into position. I think it's very important to say that this Dreamline does have a much smoother cocking cycle than some of the more mechanically complicated rifles like the Impact. Um, I don't think they're bad for it but I just think this one shows off better in the fact it is so smooth and that applies to both the side lever cocking and the trigger system. Just popping this to one side, looking at the magazine system. It's fairly familiar to FX users. Essentially, you turn that, take the cap off, you rotate this all the way around, and you drop one pellet in there, which locks the spring on the magazine system. You can then fill all the others up, pop that back on, 
turn that and that's locked in position now. So as soon as you slide that into the rifle with the filling probe and lever back, first round will load in. Obviously, when that springs all the way around after 22 shots, it will then block the filling probe so you can't accidentally think you've loaded the rifle and go off on a hunt with actually an empty gun. With it being an FAC 177, I thought I'd get the most energy by using the heaviest pellets available to me. I've got the JSB Hades and JSB Exact Heavy Diablo. These are both 10.34 grains. Again, I found the Exact Diablo is just a little bit more accurate and consistent than the Hades, but the Hades are more designed as a hunting pellet than a paper punching and accuracy pellet. Um, I would love to show you the targets here, but it was raining and they got absolutely soaked, but they are on video, which was under shelter at the time. You can scale those targets from the individual pellet size going through target and they do shoot very well these rifles. It was one of the easiest rifles from FX I've shot and that's partly because it is reasonably simple, it's got that full power capability but other than changing the power and the adjuster on the side slightly I tended to leave it as it was and if anything a bit like the Crown actually I found that this shot best on the medium setting. This is a safe try fire, but when you do fire the rifle, you get a nice quick pfft as it actually refills. And you can probably hear that on camera now if I just hold my mic closer. Hear that? That's consistent every time. You can hear that and there are no whispers or leaks from elsewhere because this has physically got fewer additional O-rings and seals because it's a simple mechanical and actually pneumatic system to it. The smooth twist X liners are still capable of being changed. You can change twist rates and calibers if you want to. And of course in the UK being FAC specification, this one will have to be put on a firearm certificate. It's not like one of the sub 12s, but you can have this rifle in a sub 12 too. If you look at the FX website, the data they publish is very similar to this rifle because this is an FAC specification for the UK. That's more akin to what everybody else around the world uses rather than our somewhat limited sub-12s, which often limit some of the functionality that some of the FX rifles can actually display and offer you. Scope mounting is on an 11mm dovetail, so there's no problem getting rings for that. And although the magazine fits underneath the scope, you don't need to particularly use artificially high mounts to make sure it's going to fit. The rifle is also available in 2.2, 2, 2 .5 and 30 calibre. Those have corresponding 18, 16 and 13 round magazine capacity. The 2.2 calibre will develop 41 foot pounds compared to the 18 or 19 shown here and at 2.5 you move up to 60 foot pounds. The 30 calibre isn't actually listed by FX but I suspect that's going to be pushing towards 100 foot pounds. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell to make sure you keep track of the regular uploads. Please go through to the end of the video, click on the links to the sponsors of this video because they're the people, along with your comments, who fund this process and make it worthwhile reviewing products for you. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.